This is one of the smallest light multi-role fighters jet in the world. Fitted with a single engine and delta wings design. Let's look at the interiors of the jet, as well as the specification of this light combat aircraft, the power plant or the engine behind it in the video ahead. We will also look at a short comparison with the F-35 jet, the French Rafale F-16, and the Flying Bullet the MiG-21. The basic step-by-step -step process of how this jet control surfaces work, and more importantly, the weapons that makes it as a multi-role 4.5 generation jet. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This aircraft began in the 1980s to replace India's aging MiG-21 fighters, which is India's flying bullet. Let's look at these versions. The Tej S Mark I Alpha for the Air Force, moving to the right is the trainer version, which is a two-seater jet. And the last one is the Tej S Navy version upgraded to be flown on this IS Vikram and Ditta. The Tej S Navy version was built to fly from the ski jump, which is the upwardly curved ramp on the deck of aircraft. It is a modified Kiev-class aircraft carrier platform and the flagship of the Indian Navy at a cost of $2.35 billion. In the deal, it also included these 45 MiG-29 jets, which were specially built for aircraft takeoff and landing. Well enough, history lessons, let's talk about the basic engineering of this aircraft. 13.2 meter is the length of the jet from the front to the back, while the delta wing configuration is just around 8.2 meter, making it one of the smallest supersonic multi-role fighter jet in the world. It has a service ceiling of 16,000 meter or 52,493 feet, while it has a range of around 3,000 kilometer or 1864 miles. It has a payload weight of around 5,300 kilogram or 11,684.5 pounds. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size, as you can imagine from its name like combat aircraft. Even much better comparing this to the different jets like American F-35B, F-18 Super Hornet, F-16 Jet, the French Rafale, and the Russians MiG-21 and MiG-29 to give us a better idea of how small and compact it is for a multi-role fighter jet. Starting from the front, this is the composite radom and inside it houses the indigenously built ATAM active electronically scanned array radar. That can track 50 targets in the sky at a range of more than 100 kilometers and engage about four of them at the same time, as per the claims by DRDO Defense Research and Development Organization. Moving to the side is the detachable flight refueling probe. This is the cockpit canopy and opens up just like this. Let's move inside the cockpit and this is what it should look like with all the basic flight controls. This is the pilot heads-ups display. Moving to the back is the pilot emergency ejection seat. Let's go outside the jet and we will find a small fin called IFF Antenna Identification Friend or FOE. This enables military and civilian air traffic control interrogation systems to identify the aircraft. Moving back is the Takin Antenna. This is the VHF or Very High Frequency Radio. Further to the back of the fuselage is the UHF or Ultra High Frequency Antenna. This is the radar warning receiver antenna that transmits pulses of radio waves which bounce off any object in their path. Before we dive into how the basic of how this plane flies, we have to understand how the parts of the jet works. Just below the radar warning receiver is the rudder of the airplane. Attached behind the wings are the inboard eleven and beside it are the outboard elevens. Moving to the front is the three segment leading edge slats. Just beside the slats are the left guns, which was already discussed in our earlier videos only a few aircraft besides the Sukhoi 57 are fitted with this mechanics. As this is a delta wing configuration the ailerons are missing as compared to the F-35 jet or Su-57. Now let's look at the basic process of how this is flown. But keeping in mind a lot of computers and fly-by-wire system is also utilized, so take these following animations with a grain of salt. Step number one, how to turn the jet to the left or right. When the pilot makes a movement using the control stick to the left, the left elevens is deflected up, causing a downward force, while the right elevons is deflected down, causing an upward force, resulting the plane to roll to the left. 
When the pilot moves the control stick to the right, the right elevons is deflected up, causing a downward force, while the left elevons is deflected down, causing an upward force, resulting in the plane to roll to the right. Step number two. How to make the plane go upwards. If the pilot pulls back on the control stick, the two elevons will rise, providing a force that will push the airplane's tail down, causing the nose to pitch up and the plane to begin rising. Step number three. How to turn the plane right or left using rudder pedals. Just a reminder this jet uses fly-by-wire system, tailored to the pedals and flight control. As the pilot steps on one of the rudder's pedals, air travels around the deflected rudder and a force is applied which causes the plane to yaw. Simply pressing the left rudder pedal causes the plane's nose to drift to the left, and by stepping the right pedal, the nose of the plane will turn right. There are around a small number of self-sealing fuel tanks in this aircraft. Some suggest this is the fuel tank on the fuselage located behind the pilot and avionics equipment. This is fuel tank number two on the left side of the wing. Moving to the right is fuel tank number three. But some suggest it has only two fuel tanks. Anyways, these internal fuel tanks can carry around 2400 liter or 640 US gallons. All this jet fuel is required for this single General Electric, 414 GE 400, which has a 22,000 pound class, after burning turbofan engine. Interestingly, this engine was also used by the Super Hornet F-18. Now let's uh, see how this works. Air is sucked from both the front intake ramp, and fuel is sprayed into a segment of the jet pipe, where it mixes with the exhaust gas and is ignited, causing a second stage of combustion to occur. To conserve jet fuel, the afterburner is used only in short bursts during takeoff, altitude climb, or combat maneuvers. The exhaust nozzle is made up of pedals and is engineered in such a way that it reduces or widens its gap. This is to reduce the stress on the turbofan engines when it is in full afterburning mode. This cannot be called a multi-role fighter attack jet if we do not talk about the weapons behind it. This is the Vimpel R-73, NATO reporting name AA-11 Archer is a short-range air-to-air missile developed in the 1980s. The minimum engagement range is about 300 meters, with a maximum aerodynamic range of nearly 30 kilometers or 19 miles at altitude. This is Astra Mark I, a beyond-visual-range BVR air-to-air -air missile, which has been developed by the Indian DRDO. Astra Mark I has a range of over 100 kilometers or 62 miles and 20 kilometers or 12 miles altitude. Now, this bad boy is the proposed BrahMos NG or Next Generation Cruise Missile to be fitted on this fighter aircraft, keeping in mind this is not to be confused with the bigger cruise missile. The range of the missile was originally capped at 290 kilometers or 180 miles as per the obligations of the missile. Moving forward, this is the Griffin 3 and Israeli New Generation Air-to-Ground Laser Guidance Kit for Aircraft Bombs. The laser-guided kit enables attacks and strikes capability against ground targets, such as bunkers and other hardened targets. We are not very sure about whether the Tejas has a gun or not. Was reported Mark 1 does not have any gun but they say the newer version Mark 1A will be equipped with this Russian Gryazev Shipunov 23mm twin barrel cannon with 220 rounds. This cannon has a range of 1000 meters. Again we have to be unbiased regarding the pros and cons of this light combat aircraft. Some potential pros of the Tejas include a low-cost option for a fourth generation fighter jet. Just $1 billion overall developmental cost, lowest in all light fighter programs in the world. All weather and all terrain and all altitude compatible was being tested in every condition for 20 years. It has advanced avionics and a modern digital cockpit. It has high maneuverability and agility due to the delta wing configuration. It has a high-tech weapon system considering it could carry weapon from various countries, including US, France and Russia, as well as the Indian DRDO. A highly integrated avionics suite and advanced fly-by-wire technology. Some potential cons of the Tejas Mark 1A include. It has a relatively short range and limited payload capacity compared to other fourth-generation fighters. With a small production run, this could make it more expensive, per unit than other options. 
It relies heavily on imported components, which could make it vulnerable to supply chain disruptions. But a gentle reminder, this is not exhaustive and can vary based on the context. We try to make every video from scratch in Blender 3D animation. So please do us a solid and subscribe to help us produce more video like these, unbiased and original content.